one in the middle on your screen? Yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, you're the one leading. So just All put your hand in and use, you in use your hand to talk since you're lagging. You should get a sock. Get a oh, sock. Oh, yeah, if you got a sock, get a sock. <laughs> Some buttons on it. I mean... <laughs> All right, we don't want to use those socks, Cody. I don't know. I don't have have any there over there, but like. All right, let's get started. Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Choker Bros. I'm your host, Sam Snipe Prime, and I'm Zach Brown, and I'm Cody Snodgrass. And today we are joined by two local qualifier winners. First, we are joined by uh, Mr. Curtis Kang. Curtis, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. And uh, we are also joined today by one member of the RVA Returners, Mr. Adam Lane. Hey, how's it going? Not too bad. Good, good. And uh, before we start, we actually had a giveaway because we want to thank our sponsors, carsofeaglease.com. Go ahead and check them out for all your singles and your sleeves and your play mats. Uh, We picked a random winner. It was... uh, from the the one for the subscriptions was uh, Crip Bane, C R I P B A Y N E. Uh, Crip Bane, if you could please either message us or message um, Cards of Evilly's team, and we'll make sure we get out your prizes right away. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Sure. Oh wait, wait! wait. Okay. Before we start, we are going to announce a second winner at the end, right? Yes. All right, we're good to yeah, go. We do have take... a second name drawn. Yep. Yeah. All right, take it away. We'll, we'll make make your way for that one. Yep. Okay, so uh, this past weekend, uh, myself, I participated in the St. Joseph, Missouri uh, local qualifier, and Adam and Curtis, they also participated in local qualifiers. Um, So I'm going to pass it off to Curtis, you first. Uh, Let's go ahead and hear about your local qualifier experience. Sure. Um, It was pretty fun. We had about 14 people, and this was uh, one of the first ones in North Carolina, I think. Uh, it was a really good shop. They actually had a really good surprise support. Um, they gave us like extra things too. I think I got a box for winning as well. Um, I think most of it was because um, they had some shipping issues with the trophy. So I still don't have that yet. So I'm waiting in the mail. Hopefully it comes. Hopefully it was real. But um, <laughs> but other than that, it was a good tournament. Um, There's a lot of different decks and it's Hunter Nance's shop. So like a lot of people are playing like his monster build. Like card for card, I think I'm not pretty sure. But um, other than that, Adam, Chris were there playing Turbo Ice, and they pretty much swept it. And it was really annoying having to play them. And well, I didn't get to play Adam, but I played Chris in the finals, and he beat me like last round of Swiss. But uh, other than that, deck was sorry. The tournament was pretty fun. Uh, pretty hard, I guess. Played against like Monsters first round, Mono Water next. And then I played, um, what did I play? I guess it wasn't that hard then, because I don't remember third round. <laughs> but, uh, last Max, round was against maximum this. disrespect to your third round opponent. Yeah, right. I'll, I'll probably remember very soon, but um, yeah. for some reason I just can't remember what it was. Yeah, so you're. Uh, so let's get on to what we really want to talk about. You're a dirty cheater, right, who can't play, <laughs> who can't, what was it? Let me just drag this on over here. This is... I was gonna say I have the deck list pulled up. So all right, so hilarious. You request your deck not to be admitted. That's garbage attitude, trash mentality, earth win, your anger, nothing new, folks. You're a net decker who's afraid to play fairly. <laughs> all right. Let's talk let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So sure. let's assume let's assume that you have some spicy tech in your deck, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I do. Yeah. Is it a fair thing for you not to have it pub- publicized? Now, going on the record before we even start, I will say that I myself plan on playing in two local qualifiers. Uh, I hope to block for Zach in the Orlando one, and I hope to block for Andy Carmona in the Miami one. Um, If I were to win those qualifiers, I would also ask for my list not to be shared. That being said, what do we think as far as is that healthy for the community? Obviously, we have some people here that think it's not very good. Yeah, I definitely agree with it. Um... If I were in their shoes, I'd probably feel the same way. But at the same time, I'm not really just doing it for myself, though. I'm kind of doing it for Adam, too, because like we've been working on this deck for like the past, what, two and a half weeks, I think? It's um, like right around like Opus 6 pre-release, we were already building it, yeah. Yeah. And then it has like a lot of special cards in it, I guess, like a lot of different tech choices, and they're pretty specific. Um, the deck itself is Yurindra Mill, 
just to get that out there. So it's about five colors, but it's not like the standard Yeringer mill where you just kind of like sit back and mill them out. It's actually pretty aggressive too. Right. So there's like a di- different lines of play, a lot of special cards in it, I guess, and like. And the other thing is, is we're not talking like you're just sitting on this list for you guys, so you guys can to roll with and just keep banking the store credit at your locals. You guys yeah. are already planning on going to Gen Con, right? Yeah, so I'm going to Gen Con. So, so there's I'm a lot on the line. Yeah, yeah. So he's actually going. I'm pretty sure he's playing the deck. I assume. Um, I assume Chris is going too. Yeah, yeah, Chris uh, is going too. Can Chris get, and I'll be a Gen Con. Can you get Chris off ice? Or no, he... it's probably it's probably, probably not gonna happen. No, oh, okay. I don't think he will. Okay. Unless you find some way to make fire ice like okay. much better than turbulence. So I think no it's imp- do it. yeah, I think it's important for the community to understand that we're not we're not like advocating that Curtis is just keeping his deck list secret so he can sit here and like farm up the community locals. I mean, he's, yeah. he's legit doing this for a friend who would like to qualify and or, or Adam's now qualified. But he didn't know that at the time, right? So Adam qualified on Sunday. Is this correct? Yeah. And Curtis yep. qualified on Saturday. On Saturday, Curtis said, please don't share the list. So not only that, but now Adam's going to Gen Con and would really probably like to secure those three buys. Um, so with that being said, what, what are your thoughts on it, Zach? Uh, I mean, I get the point of withholding information is – I'm not going to say bad for the community, but obviously it would help to have that extra information. You know, you want to see what's, if everyone wants to beat ice, which is a hot topic right now, seeing a list be among a top four in first place slot against three ice decks, you might want to know what that is. Uh, So you can see kind of card choices to beat uh, that archetype and whatever else. But to say, I think part of the quote was just a net decker who's afraid to play fairly. Uh, I don't know how this is, I don't know how reporting a deck list has anything to do with how you played uh yeah, that's I, after the tournament this has nothing to do with like, ironically you know, i'd like to tell tell a story lawyer. too um okay. the, the story is is how i actually came to know curtis um <laughs> so i actually met curtis uh in north carolina um because what had happened is he sat across next to me when i played against this guy who was like just the, I've talked about it in this podcast before, but the way he, he played was just so, like, shady and, like, just, like, like rules lawyery. And he, like, he tried to, like, get that edge. Like, I 100%... Like ankle shooting. Ankle shooting. But, like, I 100% hold people to, like, the standards of, like, if they made a mistake, they have to stick to it. Like, it's, you know, we're playing for money. We're playing competitively. That's how it should be. But it was more like, hey, dude, what is the power of your card? Well, I don't have to tell you. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, and so next, I sit, I sit down next to Curtis, or I sit across from Curtis, and I'm playing against Curtis. I think we're both undefeated at the time, right, Curtis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that was a game where you Cthulhu me three times in a row. I think I sure did. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I, and so I would say like, what is the power of your mime? And he'd be like, well, it's this, this plus Ark and Maria. And I was like, wow, man, I really appreciate how cleanly you play because you didn't have to tell me that extra information. I appreciate that. So if, if there's anyone that I can stand up and say plays a clean game here, it is certainly Curtis. So to say that he is a – what was it? <laughs> it was a long post. Yeah, afraid to play fairly? Like, no. Like, I, I, ha- I just ab- – Paul Wool, uh, I'm sorry. I have to absolutely disagree with you, man. And also, or, we've had this discussion before, but there is no issue with net decking. Like, no, yeah, absolutely there, not. The, the term net decker – it comes from a pure place of salt and it's just, it's not, it's not a thing. Like <laughs> right, you're, yeah. you're playing a combination of cards that exist within the game that you may have gotten advice from somebody. You could have seen it posted up somewhere. Not to mention, can't... why would he not want it to be posted if it was a net deck? Like, right, <laughs> who cares? Exactly. That's a yeah. perfect point. If and why does this guy want to see the why list? Does why does this guy want to see the list if he's not going to net deck? Actually, that's the perfect, <laughs> right. Perfect. Like we don't have to say anything else. That's, <laughs> so, so on to the real news. FF Dex has a comment section that nobody ever uses. <laughs> like, I, I actually sometimes scroll through to see what the author would say about their decks to kind of, like, see if it was something I'm interested in playing. Like, oh, why is this choice or why is this specific choice? And there's never any comments. So this is like a – this is a gym. Yeah. Anyways, let's move on. Let's talk about Adam's uh, LQ. So Adam, L- Adam qualifies the very next day, completely yeah. switches decks. But not even yeah. to Curtis's deck. I'd like to hear this story. So, um, I mean, I'm I'm still want I want to play 
very Andre Mill, like the build that we've been working on. But uh, I didn't want to. I'm still not ready with it. It's a hard deck to play. It's like, yeah, it's not easy. Yeah, I've been practicing with it like for the past two and a half weeks. Like, I've only played that deck the entire time, so like I'm used to it. Like I'm used to all the different plays I, and things like I that. I do. I do think it's funny that Curse and I tend to navigate to the or to gra- gravitate. Sorry, to the very same decks always. Like yeah, Zach yeah, we knows do that too. I've been testing this deck for quite a bit now like very secretively there are very very secret card choices that i have in my deck too so <laughs> as soon as gen comes over and we, we, we you know spoiler alert we will be forming a team here guys so you're looking at a future team um but we're we're going to be tech, uh, talking about these choices for sure um but anyway so it's, it's really cool that we gravitate towards those decks yeah i think me and adam especially like we kind of play the same way too so we always kind of end up playing the same thing like even past form with monsters, so. Yeah, S- same with Zach and I. Zach and I tend to play very, very similar, if not the same deck all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah we're I'm... both control players at heart. Like we play, we see, we pilot similarly because of our yeah. Magic backgrounds and like what we played then. So. Yeah, I played I played strictly control decks in Magic for a very long time. Yeah. Anyway, so tell us about the tell us about the tournament. Uh yeah, so it was a little bit bigger than Saturday, um, because it was like it was pretty much all Virginia guys. Uh, and funny enough, some North Carolina guys from Game Theory came up as well. <laughs> One of the guys that came up from Game Theory actually, it's a funny story. Uh, so at Game Theory, I was playing Turbo Ice. Uh, I, I hate the deck. First off, like it's not fun to play. No, uh, it's not no. fun for the opponent to lose to. But I, I will, it's a good deck, and I don't fault anyone for bringing it to a qualifier. No, no. Um. So I, tr- I I felt like I'd be doing myself a disservice if I didn't try it once at a local qualifier. So I, I tried it, and I'm like, I'm done. Not playing that anymore. Uh, so I brought Mono Lightning. But one of the guys from North Carolina came up, and I, I played him in the tournament on Saturday, and he was on Scions, and he was talking about how um, he had his own brew and stuff. And I was like, oh, cool. He shows up on Sunday, and what's he playing? Turbo <laughs> Discard. And I'm like, oh, this is, that's pretty funny. And... Uh, yeah, so I was I thought Mono Lightning was at a pretty good place, especially with like a lot of people playing Turbo Discard as well as yeah. like uh, Paul's pretty popular here. So I jammed three Exodus uh, and even a Shadow Lord, which was pretty good for me. Um, and thinking I was going to run into that, and I actually half the field was Scions on Sunday. Yeah, uh, probably like six to eight people were on that deck. Yeah, there was Exodus, that one. Yeah, Exodus is actually <clears throat> ironically not as good against Scions as most people would think it is. It's very awkward. Yeah. So. So yeah, it's a uh, like I, I remember at one point I was I think I was like three or four and zero, oh, and I look at the table, and I'm the only person at the table not playing Scions. <laughs> so I was like, okay. Yeah, I think I was with you too on that at that time. Yeah. And everyone else is just Scions. Yep. And so I mean, it, it worked like it worked pretty well. Uh, my tech cards came in. I made it to. I went undefeated. Uh, top eight cut. Um, and then again in top eight, I had to play Scions again. And then in finals, I was playing against Mono Fire, um, one of the guys from Fredericksburg that Curtis plays with a lot, uh, Austin. And that was a weird he, looking deck too. He hard casted two Nidhogs on me in one game. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. So he plays the first one, and I'm able to like deal with it. And then he just slams another one, and I'm like, what is happening to me right yeah, now? Yeah, he started double Nidhog that game. Yep, and then uh, it was funny. So the last, like the last turn of the game, he plays Tifa and Lednar, to, and I had like an Amon out, and he had Nidog, Tifa, Lednar, and I had Amon and one other forward, and I played Shadow Lord, killed his two two drops, tapped down his Nidog, and swung through for the seventh point of damage, and that felt pretty good. Yeah. So <clears throat> on your list, you have a uh, Ramza, right? <clears throat> yeah. And one card you don't have is Zalbarg, mm-hmm. which I thought was like. Uh, like I would be playing that card, particularly how good two drops are right now. Um, what was your What was your thought on adding Ramza but not playing Zalbarg? I asked so, because they're they're both searchable. If you were to play like the the Duke, yep. So, yeah, uh, Ramza actually didn't really do much for me at all. Uh, I played him one game and it didn't even really matter to be honest. Like it was kind of the game was over when yeah. I played him. Um, so I, I would he's definitely a card that I would probably look at taking out. Zalbarg is really good right now for sure. Uh, lots of like I said, Paul's really popular here. Uh, a lot of people were playing Paul, and if you, they were playing Paul, they were playing like Dalmaturges were everywhere, you know. So, so I, I do think Zalbag is really good as well. Uh, yeah. A card that was really good for me, like it was insane. Ramu is insane. That card's yeah, insane. Annoying. The new one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it is very nuts, especially in the mirror, obviously. 
And the merit's awesome, yeah, because like if they try to Al Cid, you, you just play this game of chicken with Al Cid, right, and then you're yeah. like, oh cool, I'll dole my own Al Cid, and then uh, I'll deal seven K to yours. That's cool. Uh, I use like every mode. It's 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 crazy good. Yeah. It is good. Yeah. The the other omission, I, uh, there's two actually other omissions I would wanted to talk about. Uh, one is actually I think it's a better against Mono Ice possibly than the Exodus is Cyclops, um, particularly because. It kills uh, the Argath, the Thaumaturge, like all this on EX Burst. Um, it kind of does let you switch into like these aggressive modes when you want to attack. Uh, why no Cyclops? Honestly, it, it wasn't even crossed my mind. Like it's it's probably just something I didn't think about. Yeah, uh, I, I was I, I was kind of like honing the, the Layla Vikings deck that are popping up. I don't know if they're popular there, but they are very very good. Um, yeah. So it just wipes them out. Yep, so, I've uh, I've been playing those decks. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say. Uh going on why it's good against ice too is like if they ever get to a point where they start party attacking you through which happens frequently right exactly. cyclops will destroy a party it's one of ice's so. strongest things right is they party attack with like right. a genesis and some crappy and like guy and you, yeah, yeah you yeah. have to either trade your guy or discard a card damage and discard or yeah exactly right and then like if yeah. you don't if you kill the genesis they replay another one if yep. you if you kill the thaumaturge then you're just yeah, well, you just killed a Thaumaturge. Congratulations, you traded your big guy for a Thaumaturge. Like, right. You know. Um, the the other card I wanted to talk to you about um, was uh, Sid of Clan Gully. I know you have King of Burmesia here, and that's obviously to go get Estinian, who is nuts. But uh, is is getting the Estinian more important than getting the Lua special, in your opinion? Because I just um, felt like, like Clan of Clan Gully, so, or, or the Sid of Clan Gully is so good. So, um, well, one thing is the burst is kind of nice. So if it comes off the top, I get a free Astinian. But second, oh, I, I mean, never noticed it. I forgot the heady X burst. So that's good. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so I, there was one point where I was thinking about playing a Lua and then one, a one of Ewan just to like finish games where I wouldn't normally be able to win. And then I was going to run Clan Gully at that point. Uh, also, I had tested a lot with Kane, the new Kane. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of times, if I already had Astinian, I would go get Kane. And I actually really like Kane. Um, the more the more I test with him, I don't think he's that bad. Sometimes he's like a good bait for Al Cid. If they like try to slam something to steal your cane, you just Al Cid it to take it back. And yeah. with Lulu out, it's a 10k. It's also great with Red Mage because like haste is all that thing needed. Yep. Uh, so it, I had Kane in like a couple days before. I took Kane out for the Shadow Lord. Uh, honestly, like yeah, I probably had. Wi I wished most games that that Bermacia probably had been a, a Clan Gully, just to be able to go get a Lua. A Lua. Yep. There was one game in top eight where I saw all three Aluas in the first four or five turns and it was disgusting like it was really disgusting because i i had at one point my board was like i'll sit a lua and then i slammed an astinian that turn and then a lua specialed and he looked oh, at my yeah. break zone and he realized i had the one alua there and one alua in the field and i had two cards in hand yeah and he goes he goes you don't have the third one i'm gonna call your bluff and he blocks and i'm going here's the third one and I'm, sorry oh wow yeah yeah that actually happened to me today during uh testing i was testing uh a buddy um play for a Australian qualifier and I was actually playing your list um I think I had Sid of Clan Goalie I had swapped out one of the Exoduses for a Cyclops I think most of the list was similar than that as far as that goes I had a Zalbarg in there for something but anyway but yeah I I, I just felt like a like I drew all three Alua's early and it's just nuts because you get to choose when to trade and then sometimes you don't. You're just like, okay, my Lua's dead. I'll replay another one. Sometimes you don't even special. Um, but anytime you have the Lua special, you just feel really good. Uh, particularly like when you have like Zemus, because when you draw that Alua, then you can Zemus in the other Lua and the game's over, right? Because you have that Alua, you can special it, you can reactivate Zemus, you can do the same kind of shenanigans with like Amon and Alua. That's just nuts. Uh, but so. How was a stadium for you? Um, actually, I only played him like two or three games. Uh, yeah. it was always to to win, like it was to end the game, basically. Sure, I mean that's what he's that's what he does, right? Yeah, yeah. He, when he when he when I was playing him, it was good. Uh, but I wouldn't say that I played him like every single game. Uh, and I kind of like him at two right now, like as a two of. I don't think you need to go like crazy with him. But when he hits, I mean, yeah, he's nuts. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I re I really liked your list. Um. What did you think about that Mono Fire deck? Uh, it's interesting. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> I know Curtis. Curtis plays that guy a lot. Uh, so many Palums. <laughs> Look at Curtis it, dying over here. I was gonna say what? <laughs> he's, yeah, just... he's, he's done. Um, I mean, 
I looking at the list, I would think that he had a lot of awkward hands, but he he never did. Um, at least against me, I, he played uh, like I, I saw the game before he played me in Swiss, and he went like turn one, Camlin hot into chaos, and the and the next turn was Emperor Zonde, and the dude was playing Scion, so he's like, I don't know what I do against that. <laughs> and I was like, well, I mean, I, good thing I have Exodus, I guess. Uh, every time he slammed yeah. Cam on me, I always had an answer, though. So, the funny thing is, yeah. yeah, so I I love Austin. He's, you know, a lot of fun. But usually we always get on him because he's always pitching his hand to, like, just play a bunch of stuff. It used to be, like, first turn Tifa. Like, every turn, like, he would just play Tifa and swing just for a point of damage, like, no reason. And, like, he just ditched his entire hand, and by the time, like, turn two comes up, he has no cards, he has one Tifa on board and, like, one backup. Somehow. All the time. So we always used to get on him for that, and we used to tell him to play, like, a different deck so he could learn to play backups. But, like, I guess with Opus 6, fire is good, and he just did what he usually does, slam big cards, and it turns out it worked for him. So. <laughs> I play my 6-drop back and play guy. Yeah, pretty much. And it's, like, yeah. the random the random Odins in the deck just make me laugh because, he like... He won. He the the set before me because I finished my set and I was watching the end of the the other set like to see who had to play me, and he won off six damage. Ex burst Odin. That's the only three lightning cards in his deck. Yep. <laughs> to be fair, I do like if you're playing Shadow, I don't mind having the Odins in there because yeah, it's good on the Ex burst. Oh yeah, 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 If yeah. you pitch it to deal seven K to something. Yeah, especially so... with like the mid hogs too. You play like yeah, Shadow. Yeah, oh, yep. just pay yeah. I do you know, really like that actually. Be the nine K. Speaking of that, actually in Swiss. So I had my board, I was like overwhelming him at one point, and he had just Shadow out, and my board was Zemus and Hildebrand. And I had just, I think I had just Zemus Hildebrand back in, and I had a Nashu back up. So I, and, but no Lulu, so the biggest I could get him was a 9k, and he had Shadow. He pitches two fire, he pitches a fire card, Nidhogs by Hildebrand, I'm like, okay. And then he pitches a fire card, and discards Nidhogg to Nidhogg by Zemus. And I'm like, did that just happen to me? <laughs> Build like, your own Bahamut. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I guess I just lost both my forwards to Shadow. <laughs> Um, but actually, Shadow's not terrible right now either, because uh, even against like the turbo stuff, if you slam him, they can't party attack into that. Like they'll just die. Yeah. So first strike is a beating. Yeah, I was playing a deck that had both Barts and like the Legend Barts and Semi, and being able to block seven uh, K parties and stuff like against Ice. If they attack with like a seven K Thaumaturge, you just block, ping their seven K. You first strike on that to kill it, and then you don't die to the little guy. And if they can't play around stuff like that and like put more big guys, it's great. Yeah, first strike is yeah. extremely powerful. Oh yeah, I remember. With, I remember my third match. It was mono ice. <laughs> I just remember it. Now. <laughs> Speaking of mono ice, let's uh, let's talk about Cody's uh, qualifier. Cody, you played the qualifier. Are uh, you trying to yeah. like super qualify or something? Uh, I was just trying to get some trophies. No, I was really trying to get one of my SDL guys uh, through to get their qualification. That way I have somebody to travel with. All right. Uh, but it was in St. Joseph, Missouri, and uh, it was a pretty it was a pretty stacked lineup. I walked in, and I knew there would at least be a few people that were already qualified. Like, I knew Ben was going to be there because we talked to him in the last podcast. Yep. Uh, but then I walk in, and I see Aaron, and I see Kyle Peters. Yeah. And I'm like, and then I see Pat, which I knew... We just talked about Pat in the last podcast as well. Yep. And I was like, Pat oh, made the man. finals, yeah. Yeah, I was like, this is going to be like a, a stacked day. Like, And it was. And then, top eight was stacked. Yeah, and then Ale obviously Alex, he topped the Petite Cup in Kansas. So I was like, man, this is competition. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I obviously, I played Mono Ice. It's up on FF Decks. Um, I didn't really change too much from my uh, from my Opus 5 list. Right. Uh, just added, pretty much just added Renella for the most part. Uh, in round one, I uh, I had to actually go up against Pat, and he was probably one my hardest match for the day. Uh, he was on Mono Water Fusoya. Right, which and, I was uh, excited to see. Oh yeah, I was I was too. Well, I wasn't thrilled to be on the other side of it, <laughs> but uh, just because everybody we were we actually laughed about this. We were talking about everybody always thinks that uh, if you play against water with ice, it's like a free win, and it's completely different. Like in reality, like it's like the worst matchup. I don't even want to play it at all. <laughs> oh really? I actually like yeah. the I like the matchup from the ice perspective, but it, you do have to play very differently. You yeah, have to, no, you, no. like it really helps if you go into the matchup knowing you're playing against water, uh, because then you can just like turn one lock or turn one Genesis, and you're in like really good shape. But like right, right. not knowing that, if you're like I'm gonna play two backups, and the water deck's like sweet, I'm gonna play two backups. Thank you for the time warp. Right. Like you basically just gave them a free turn. And that's basically uh, how it started off. Uh... But no, 
I got him down to six damage, and unfortunately, he made a misplay where he bounced my orphan instead of bouncing my Genesis, and my Genesis could attack for the last point of damage. Um, but I mean, it was a great match. He hit three EX burst Steiners <clears throat> off of Fusoya, so he was breaking my guys and searching. I was like, "There's no way I'm winning this game." Yep. Uh, but uh, then after that, I played uh, a woman named Christina. Uh, she was on like the Cipher, like the Wind Lightning deck. Okay, I just uh, I just watched uh, Nicholas Snell play that on Octagon. Yeah, the deck's okay. really interesting. I never realized how good the backups were with Cipher. Like they actually just completely change how good he is. Yeah, it, it was it seemed pretty good. Unfortunately, yeah. I opened like Thom Argath, and I just kept the discarding up, uh, so she really never even got to play much. Uh, and then after that, round three, I played Kyle Peters. He was still on uh, Wind Water. Uh, I started off with early discard in that game as well, and uh, he didn't really get to play much as well. That's what he's known uh, for too. Oh yeah, no, he, yeah, yeah. I was not looking, and he was undefeated at the time I had to play up against him. I, I was, oh no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I take that back. Let me, let me go back. In round two, I played the guy that ended up winning, Andrew. Okay, and we're, we that definitely going to want to talk about his deck list. That's right. That's right. Okay, that was yeah. round two. Because that's so I played that, Christi that, oh, Christ Christi Christi Christina. I played round three. So. Okay. Uh, I played Andrew round two, and I had no idea what I was playing against. <laughs> no. I I open. I want to say I opened two backups. It might have just been one two drop, and he just instantly just discards three, plays a Stinian, and I'm like, okay. I mean, this isn't like the worst I've seen, but like pretty bad for he, him. Yeah. Yeah, like like I I felt fine. At you're that just moment. like you're just like vain. Go. <laughs> yeah well and then and then i'm like his next turn he attacks and i'm like okay you probably won't attack again because he's got a discard from hand well sure enough he just dumps right from hand and d attacks again i'm like all right i don't i don't know what i'm up against because now his graveyard has it's got some lightning cards but then it's got like a wind card and i'm like i don't know what i'm up against there's an earth card so then i start getting forwards on board i swing and i hit a star symbol and i'm like I have no idea what this is. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so he adds Cam. I swing again. I hit another Star Sibyl. I'm like, all right, this this Ooh. is this is looking really rough for me at this point. Then he goes Windmill Slam, Camel Knot, Search Chaos. I'm like, okay. I, <laughs> I'm like hoping to just to draw Vane at this point. Um, but yeah, I mean, he just he kept up the the board presence. He dropped a wall. Yeah. Uh, and there was one turn where, like, I had a pretty established board. I had backups, and I went to Renoa to re, like, rebounce Vane to redole his Camel Knot because he untapped it off something. I can't remember what it was. And uh, he Chaos Walkered me out of his hand, and I was like, "All right, you play that card too." <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, yeah, I play like over thirty EX bursts. I'm like, all right, well, good game. Like, I mean, he killed me. It wasn't. Yeah. I felt like I had a good, like, I felt completely in control, but. No, I wasn't at all. Yeah, it it was just wall cam and Estinian just swinging over all right. my stuff. But yeah, so then I played Christina with the cipher deck, won that. Played Kyle on Wind Water and won that. And then um, round five, I played Christina Foglio, I believe is her name. Yeah. And uh, she was also on Tempo Ice, and she started off with a, a lot of discard. And I mean, she was just killing me. I was down six damage to nothing. Uh, and then I just slowly started grinding back. And, uh, I mean, it was probably, like, the most nerve-wracking game I've had in a while. Like, <laughs> I mean, she had me, like, against the wall. Then everybody's, like, around. Like, uh, I believe her husband, Mike, or uh, her husband, Patrick. Patrick, yeah. He, he He's standing right there. And, like, my friends are standing there. I'm like, oh, man. Uh, but <laughs> I I ended up pulling through and winning that game. Uh, but, yeah, I, had, I told him I would give him a shout-out. Shout-out to out. Patrick. Yeah, for sure, man. I, Patrick's Patrick's good people. We oh yeah, meet, they were. We got to meet him were, in Kansas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were. They were actually. They came up and they were talking about you guys, and they were talking about the podcast. And I mean, they were just super friendly, very yeah. nice people. So yeah, shout outs to those guys. So I do want to make two quick notes too, um, because <clears throat> while Zach and I didn't have a qualifier here, QQ um, instead of LQ, um, <laughs> um, we did get to play our octagon match, um, and we are two zero right now in our for our team. Um, we Angel is playing his match tomorrow, uh, despite the. I guess I, I'm not sure. Are they? Do they do tiebreakers? Is there a reason for Angel I to play? I don't know. 
Yeah, well, Angel's going to play his match tomorrow. Um, speaking of close games, I've never had a closer game I've ever played in my life than my, my game that I played. Um, because I kept messaging Zach, yeah, I'm going to lose this game, by the way. This game's well, over, I thought by you the said way. you did lose, so I'm sitting there like, oh, oh I, I was And then just... I get another message, I'm like, oh, what? Yeah, what? like, like every turn, I should have just died, and I just, like, faded. I had to play, I have to say that, like, you know, I make mistakes all the time. This is the one game that I just finally didn't make any mistakes. And if I slipped up one time, the game was over. So it was, like, the most, like, anxiety-filled game. But I had, like, this nice, relaxing classical music on in the background. So <laughs> it was actually ironic. Actually, I recorded much of the game. So if I ever, like, release that, I don't want to show Zach that. You guys will just hear this random, like, classical music while I'm playing. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was so interesting. Um and then, actually, on the note, too, that when, when Cody was talking about Estanian, real quick, I want to ask Zach, Estanian and Strongest Sword, is it too expensive? Could it work? In Strongest Sword yeah. or against it? Um, in it. It's awkward because it's five. Uh, you can get away with threes, but five is asking a bit much. Uh, okay. You have to have something impactful like Golbez or... Um, actually, yeah, that's that's about all I can think of. But so what is the future, what is the future might... of Strongest Sword Golbez? Is there... A future? Uh, I, there are plenty of cards that are good in the deck. There are plenty of cards that make the deck work and yeah. help its game plan, and it's gotten better. But I think, I said this in a previous podcast, I think in an environment where Ice has played so much, I don't think it can survive. Right, you know, it's like you, every you don't set. Play, it's okay to have bad matchups, mm -hmm. but having an unwinnable matchup is kind of rough, uh, especially right. if it's one of the higher percentage decks in the field. Uh, so... Not only, even if they weren't just discarding you, uh, dull and freeze effects have historically been insanely good against. Yeah. Um, the only thing I could say is maybe going back to a build with like two Cosmos or two Chaos or something and having like Lax, something like that, maybe. Yeah, that's, that's actually. You, you can keep that the could aggressive be interesting. up. And then, like, yeah, and then you can yeah. play Urian Jerks, Yardy, and Lightning and bring it back, that kind of thing. I think, maybe it's, you can do that, but. I think it's funny that, you know, Golbez. Uh, you know, I don't know how many people start with Golbez, but a lot of people I talked to, his first deck was Golbez. Uh, the guy I was helping test today, his first deck was Golbez. Um, mm. Well, I, I, I was going to say a quick anecdote was the first pack, uh, or first three packs I ever opened from a shop, I got a Golbez. The first I card I ever it, bought was Golbez. Yeah, and I looked at the card, and I'm like, this can't be fair, right? And I just, right. that's the first thing I did was I built the deck with it in Opus 1, and it was sick. Yep. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I just destroyed locals for so long with Golbez. That was before Zach showed up, but it was just... All I did was play Golbez all the time, and it was just, I was, like, undefeated for, like, months on Golbez. Um, and the thing is, is that you think that every new set, Golbez really does get all these really cool, sweet new targets. And all and just cards that actually just support it are getting better and better. Like, even cards like, like right now, the Earth Kefka, the backup used to be Break It, but you could, uh, like, there's just, like, I don't know, there's just so many, like, new cards. Like, the um, the Rogue is a good one. Mm -hmm. Right now, it just got Squall from this set. I can see Paul even being Paul, yeah, Squall. Um, so, you have to give it another haste threat out of that deck. Um, so, it can have up to, like, four haste threats now, right? At one time. So, it's just missing the fifth color for haste. But, whenever big cards are popular, like they are right now, or like they, they were, Vayne becomes more popular, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, like Cody, I don't know, were you playing three Vaynes? Uh, I was still on two. Okay, but, uh, but a lot but of people was... are on three veins right now, you know? Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, and, and, then, tested... and then when the small decks are popular, you have Shadow Lord. Like, like can we play a can we play a, a Golbez in a meta where, like, Adam Lane's going to show up and play Shadow Lord against you? He's going to be like, <laughs> Exodus, kill your six guy. Oh, you idiot, I get all these two drops. And he's just like, Shadow Lord. Oh, and kill, kill your, your four drop that's kill your Gilgamesh. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I don't know why I want to go on a tangent it's... about that. I just thought it was interesting because I know there was a lot of people who actually play Golbez. A lot more than, than you think. Or at least a lot of people because that did the, play it. The discussion of, you know, bounce effects not being as useful anymore. And, like, even most water decks, even water facility yeah. decks aren't even playing Leviathan anymore. They're just playing more Chucha and stuff like that. Right, so you think uh, Golbez would be better. But... Golbez is like, ooh, sweet. No more unit H to deal with. No more Leviathans. Yeah. But it's not... It doesn't yeah. Matter. So, so talk about reevaluating cards. Uh, let, let's talk about reevaluating the Opus Six cards. Yes, they just came out, but certainly there are some cards that have proven to be uh, what let's say lackluster, right? Sure. Let, let, let's start with you, Adam. You have a pretty big grin on your face. Um, for me, I guess it would probably be like I was really excited to play Leo 
like really excited. I was like, oh man, he's gonna open up these four like window to like four color, five color decks. And even then, like um, with the four or five color stuff, you're not even seeing them because you don't need them. Like 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 your Ranger Mill. Um, I tried them and I was like, I, I if I just play correctly, I don't even need them in the deck. Yeah. Um. So he's just been kind of underwhelming, and he was a card that I was really excited about. Yeah, I'm still really excited for Leo. Um, he's certainly proven not as good right now, but I think that we're just not playing him in the right decks. Uh, I'm still working on it. I don't have the, I don't have the magic answer. Uh, Maybe that's what I'll we'll do this weekend. I'll make a good Leo deck. That'll be my thing. Oh, <laughs> uh, you mean like you're gonna make a good Carbuncle deck? I never Ooh. said I was going to make a good Carbuncle deck. I said I was going to make a good Carbuncle deck. <laughs> okay. All right, so I want to see a good Leo deck. Yeah, that's interesting. I uh, what do you guys what what does everyone else think about Leo? Uh I, I think he's okay. I just haven't seen him played at all yet. So yeah, to be fair, I just haven't seen him. Like, I'm sure most people I've talked to, at least in the local area and a couple people across uh, the way, they've been like building decks with mm-hmm. him, but no one's yeah. actually been playing the decks with him yeah so he he's a legendary um he's gonna take a little yeah he's a legendary so people don't own a lot of him and the people in the list that we're seeing are out of big uh qualifiers right and so maybe you don't have time to take a a less tested deck like a leo specific deck to a qualifier that just released right after the opus comes out because you're playing for a nationals invite so you're going to play take like a a variant on the urine your mill you're going to take a variant on mono ice you're going to take a variant on mono lightning these tested decks that are really good um and you know i i just don't know if if leo we're going to see a lot of leo at the beginning but i I do think it's possible it's good i think the thing about leo too is the decks where he's going to be good are going to be very complicated to build properly because the toolbox that he opens up where you can literally play any color as long as you can protect him that's going to take a lot of tuning to find the right combination of cards and answers and what do you care about what do you have to one of them is definitely cleone right because Cleo just does a great job of protecting I, I anything. Think there's, it's Monsters it, X. Yeah, sure. and it adds a character to the board. Right, so I think that might be part of it too. Is like you can play a Leo deck and like, oh, I have all these cool yeah. r- random summons. Maybe I have a Gito to play colored stuff. You can play We're Phoenix, get other... back Leo, block, yeah. killer, killer guy with your exactly, giant yeah. one drop. Yeah, Curtis, what about you? Any cards that are, that are very disappointing so far? Uh, I'd probably say Zidane for me. Like... It's a good card and, you know, it has good effect, but, like, every time someone plays it against me, like, it just ends up doing nothing. So I've always wanted to play Wind, and I kind of wanted to put that in the Wind deck, too, and obviously it'll probably be good. But so far, I haven't seen anyone really use them to, like, any good deck, I guess. Like, yeah. it just doesn't make me sweat at all. Like, it's easy to play around, and, like, you know, if you just put something bigger than it, they'll never swing because they don't want to lose it. That's... So, that's the problem with the card, I think, is that his main value, like, sure, you can put him in a build with, like, Gasper and cheese somebody out or something like that. Yeah. But his inherent power comes from attacking, which he's not very big. He's, what, a 7K for four, yeah, right? Yeah, just a 7K. And his effect's great, yeah. but you have to be willing to lose him or you have to play a deck with, like, Zemus or other ways to make him unblockable, stuff like that, and that bottlenecks you into certain colors and certain combinations of cards. So maybe that's why, but it's definitely an awkward ability trigger kind of for him and what he wants to be doing yeah yeah that's interesting um what about what about you cody um i actually i was gonna agree with curtis i actually played against uh like a wind ice discardy mill deck with paul and stuff and it felt like paul was way more intimidating than zidane was like i was way more concerned with losing six cards off the top of my deck than like and I would just play out of my forward, so Zidane's attacks were never alive. It's it's interesting. Um, um, yeah, I guess it just also depends on what deck you're playing against, right? So for example, Zach has watched me play. I think I think you were definitely watching one round where I was playing against Paul, and mm-hmm. I let the Paul hit me twice, despite being able to kill it at any point that I wanted to. Because you're playing Earth. I was playing Earth, <laughs> and I wanted the Paul to hit me because I knew that I was in favored in the late game, and I was playing cards like Minor and Minfilia, uh, the six drop Minfilia. And it ended up being extremely relevant to things he put in my yard. Um, and also, I was playing Uranger because I was playing the Scions deck. So everything he put in my yard was like super beneficial to me. 
And so I actually land, hit me with the paw twice, where I just could have killed at any point because I'm, I'm playing Scions. Yeah, and you're like, here, let me go get my perfect backup and the forward that's going to kill your forward. Yeah. And put them in my hand, and then next turn, slam, slam, you have no board, go. Like, <laughs> yeah. So ironically, I thought that, yeah, but at, whereas, like, Zidane, like, I, I haven't played against him, but none of my Scions can target him, so that's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you can't target him, but he's still pretty weak and, like, yeah. almost... Well, I guess you could tighten weak. him, though, too. You could tighten him. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Cody, do you have a card that you found overwhelming? Or underwhelming? Uh, outside of Zane, Zidane, you mean? Yeah. Um. Outside of copying Curtis's choice. <laughs> you asked Curtis first. Uh, <laughs> That's fair. I don't think. Yeah, what, uh, about you, what about you, Zach? We'll come back to you, Cody. You said underwhelming? Yeah, underwhelming. Oh man! Like for I me, mean, I'll, mine I'll, probably would have been Leo. Um, that's fair. I'll start. I'll start with one Minwoo. Um, yeah. When I played Minwoo, I thought it was absurd. Um, the things I were doing with Minwoo were just disgusting, right? I don't mm -hmm. know, but you know, whether it's been on Octagon or in person, when someone plays a Minwoo against me, I don't know if they're just doing it wrong. But like, it's never been good. <clears throat> it's just not. Like a lot of times they miss. Because they're playing like sub 15 summons. I think you should play like 15 summons. Um, or like they belias the wrong target sometimes. Like, <clears throat> I don't know. There's a lot of play to like the Minwoo decks. And and then like you look through the, the top results and Water's doing well. Water, in fact, just did pretty well into the Japan tournament and wasn't playing Minwoo. Makes me very sad. Especially because like between Minwoo and Garnet, like you just have everything you could ever want. Right. And the fact that it's not showing up makes me pretty sad for the card um because in order to make the backup minwoo a fair card they need to print a card called minwoo that you want to play <laughs> over the backup and this seems like it could be that like they could have named this card anything else and it would have been great the fact that it's named minwoo makes it at least fair but yet it's still not seeing play which does surprise me right i mean if if you are going to hit i mean think of realm kind of like a free a free card right because you're going to hit usually when you play it um and the monster deck you actually hit a lot less than you do in like mono water monsters for example because you have so many summons but like in the minwoo deck if you build it right i think you're almost always hitting so it's like a two cp i guess it's technically four if you're playing a card for it but 7k it's not bad on stats and when it attacks it threatens cards like kushalane uh the card i think that's insane with it is the new diablos like just mm -hmm. that card's insane with with Minwoo. Um, obviously, you can cast your 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 Bahamut's, particularly if you're playing like the red decks. Like if you're playing like Water Fire, for example, because then you have like the Vermilion backup that goes and gets your Bahamut. It goes and gets your Belias. It could get a card like the Four Drop Phoenix. Like, and then it, it just doesn't see any play. And again, maybe it is Legend. We are at the beginning of a new set. It could suffer from the same Leo problem that we talked about before. But like the card seems nuts. Am I crazy? I don't think crazy. <laughs> there's there's a lot of people uh, experimenting with it here. Um, nothing nuts though. Like I haven't seen like I, I, on paper he sounds really good to me. Um, but like a lot of the people are still experimenting, and I feel like they're trying to figure out like what works for them. The most yeah. interesting thing I've seen so far is someone dumped them in like the Carbuncle deck, like Water Earth, and ba essentially you just get a free Carbuncle on them, and then you Graviton trigger just something else and filter it. Oh, so your first car your gross. first Carbuncle is free. <laughs> your first Carbuncle is basically free, and Min with a nine K, every turn. I never actually thought about that. That's that's pretty gross. And it also searches for it does search, but it like helps you get your carbuncle. Yep. I could see playing that too. I could also see playing like a one of or two of, of the Terra, the light terra, because it also works amazingly with carbuncle since it happens to hit that seven K threshold. Right. And then it also works great with Minwoo because you can go get any other thing to summon. For example, you could go you could play Terra, go get Belias, attack with Minwoo, give Terra haste. Terra special them or attack with Terra. That seems pretty dope to me. Yeah, I, I like that. <laughs> yeah, I think that I just I'm so surprised it's underplayed. I don't know. <clears throat> all right, so I think I have my card for okay. most underplayed. I was scrolling, I was sitting here scrolling through all the cards, like trying to think of one you haven't already mentioned. Uh, Thordin, the five CP EX burst backup in water that yeah. searches any card. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was going to like break the game alongside Moogle 11, uh, just being able to search your deck at any time, basically, for any card. To be fair, and... Moogle 11 is nuts. 
Oh, that car. Yeah, yeah I love that car. That, that car's nuts. On, on my yeah. you know, mention here. Uh, but, but yeah, yeah. Thornton, like, it looks insanely powerful, but I I don't want to ever say that I think five is too much for searching your deck. It's, but I it's think we three about if you have a way to break it, but yeah. Right, yeah, and that might be the value that we're missing is we need to be able to replay it or something. But yeah, I haven't seen... I tried building with it, and I, it was always one of my first cuts because I just can't afford to have it. Uh, cards, that, just... cards that break your backups, though, like cards like Delita, you typically mm -hmm. are playing with, like, Golbez, so you're playing with other cards that are more important to break. Right. You know, or you're trying to, dram or you're trying to jam, like, Feral Chaos in a deck <laughs> where people are playing cards like Vayne that lock it down, or... I think I think Feral Chaos is bad against cards like Thaumaturge because they're going to make you discard your hand and then you're going to draw Feral Chaos and you have a dark card in your hand that costs five. It's got to be the worst feeling and ever. And if you want to kill a Thaumaturge in combat, sacrifice something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and if you do that, they might just vein you next turn. Yeah. So Or ex or Exodus you. Or Mateus right. when you block. It, it's... it's <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, well, I would certainly never block with a Feral Chaos. Look, attacking and sacrificing something is one thing, but blocking, like... Yeah, I don't know. See, so, I, I I don't value any damage besides the seventh. If you guys know, like the way I play, like the seventh damage is all that matters. Yeah, I mean, like as long as you don't die, you're fine. Yeah, I'll block with a feral chaos when One I'm at is seven not none. or six. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so I think Thordin has been underwhelming for me. He was one of my really hyped up cards that I was like, super excited to build with, and I, he just hasn't panned out for me yet. And I haven't seen him either. That's true too. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I. Uh... I got my card. Uh, you actually stole my my second choice too, Sam, with Minwoo. Um, Is it Leviathan? But no, no, it, no. Uh, it, it's actually the legendary Seifer. Um I think that card. I don't know. I see everybody playing it online. I do too. And yeah. I play. I've played against it a million times, and I just I don't I don't like the card at all. Yeah, I, I agree with you. There's something to be yep. said for people playing a card for with good art. I think the main the main issue with them is he doesn't have any protection, and you're you're putting a lot of deck slots toward him. Like basically, you're you're committing eight cards to win lightning, and he's power reduction, which doesn't really work well with what they're trying to do most of the time. Yeah, you could be playing cards like Hildebrand or Alua that all, that have haste and protect themselves, right. or at least now she protects the Hildebrand. Or if it dies, it comes back, and Alua has built-in protection. That's a good point, Adam. Cipher doesn't have built-in protection. Um, yeah, I really wish one of his backups protected him from something. Like, even yeah. if it was one or the other, like abilities or summons. Because, um, I mean, other than that, I mean, if, if he gets in and you, he, if he stays on the board for a few turns, he is really threatening. He is. But, yeah. but he's really easy to kill. That's the problem. He's actually really great with the Lua, too, because um, one thing that people don't realize is that it's also when he blocks. So you can actually, like, a Lua special to untap him, and then their guy's <laughs> getting negative 4K. Four, yeah. Right, which is... You know, pretty gross. Um, but I, I, I kind of agree with you. I think that people, if they're going to play him, they need to play him in a, in a deck with a Lua. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess... See, I, I guess I'm not disappointed by him because I didn't have, like, great standards by him. Where yeah, I, I, didn't... I didn't think he was going to be busted. I, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and say the opposite of Adam. I'm impressed with Cypher. Because <laughs> if I had to rate him... When I thought when the set was released, I had rated him at like a four as far as Legends goes. He just doesn't do anything that that well. But if I had to rate him now, I'd say he's like a six. Like he's not as a good. But a low. Think of Alua. She's heroic, right? Mm -hmm. And this guy's a legend. And Alua is no no question better than Cipher. Um, but but I thought he was garbage. I think he's playable. But but you know, if you thought he was great, and then like he's just he's not great. That's for sure. I'd see why you'd be disappointed. He's not great. Yeah, I, I thought the package was going to be better than it actually is. I think that was I was higher on the like the three cards together. Yeah. And then yeah. once I started playing it, I realized it just wasn't that good. So I, I think a six is probably accurate. Like I was probably higher on it than you were. Yeah. And now I've kind of come down a little bit. Yeah, you know, I the thing is that you know it's the the style of decks I play. If 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 you know my types of decks, <laughs> for sure the style of deck that I've been grinding with is very out of my element. Normally, I don't like to attack, like. <laughs> Like, I, I, I value decks that don't attack until you... Like, Golbez, for example, it, it's not an attacking deck until you win. You, you know, you, right. you win with Golbez in one turn. I played Modern Water Monsters. I played Uranger Mill. I don't like to attack until it's time to win. Uh, Cypher is definitely, like, a grindy card, right? So... Yeah. It's not something that, like, you know, I value very highly. I think, it, I think it's okay. I just feel like it's in the same boat with all the other Cyphers. Like, they're... Like they're yeah. good, they're okay. Like you can play them if you want to, but I don't think 
that's anything that you should be building a deck around yeah. to be fair what about what about uh borgen the the heroic guy that uh when they when he dies you, they, they discard right it's the opposite of the viking <clears throat> the one drop viking ironically right so if you had to compare the two there's the two drop thaumaturge and there's the two drop viking they both have the inter style one draws one discards there's no doubt that thaumaturge is better right Right. Even, even if it didn't have a bigger body, which it does whenever they have less cards in their hand or whatever, right? Right. I actually think the one drop Viking is better than Borgen. What do you guys think? Uh, so whenever you first brought Borgen up, I think it was in one of our past podcasts. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I heard you wrong. I thought it sounded way better, and then like when I got the set, I realized I was like, oh, I don't really, I don't like that card. I like ice has all the best into the field abilities or some of the best at least uh and leave the field abilities we don't really have much and i don't i'm not a big fan of those yeah it's interesting i can't think of a way to like really is it leaves it or work. dies it's when it dies yeah it's when it's put from the field into the break zone yeah, it has to hit the break zone to get the discard yeah the card well, just i was just doesn't... asking like if it gets uh bounced or exiled with shantota or something does it still work but yeah, no, it doesn't. Yeah. So hey, let's move on to your cards that impressed you. All right, we'll go in the opposite order. So, actually, no, let's start with Cody so someone doesn't steal his. <laughs> oh, sweet. Yeah, because I, I actually think I might be the one that would steal his too, so we'll see. All right, uh, I'm going to go with uh, Mog11. Surprised oh, so you? Interesting. Um, am I... right. actually, actually, a lot of people didn't think it was going to be that good. No, it is one of uh, it is ridiculous uh against aaron in top eight uh at the local qualifier i mean he he would leave it untapped just in case he needed it for like a summon or something and if he didn't need to cast that summon that turn he would just dump it search add whatever he needed for the next turn that was me and my octagon match yeah yeah i mean it, it's just that card is way too good for it's like I, ironically I ironically i was playing that matchup against or i was playing that matchup for my my team tournament and I was kept messaging Zach back and forth. Uh, and and I, I played, believe it or not, I played standard units. I won't go to the description <laughs> of the deck. Um, not because I care about hiding it, but because uh, there's someone that plans on playing it in a big event. I don't want to talk about the deck, so I don't want to spoil it for him. But I uh, I played this standard units deck. And um, I kept messaging Zach, yeah, I'm just dead. Yeah, I'm just dead. I'm just dead. There was one point where the guy moogled. I have six cards left in my deck. And, I, and he has, like, 24, and he moogles, and I'm just like, well, if I thought it was dead before, I'm just definitely dead now. And then he just died. It was great. But, <laughs> you know, granted, if you build your deck a little better than, than that, than that it, it wasn't that this guy's deck was bad, it's just that Moogle wasn't good in his deck. He actually had, like, a very aggressive Chocobo, uh, Chocobos deck, and it was amazing. His deck was super awesome. I love the, the Chocobos uh, thing. Maybe that would be my one that's impressed me most. The Chocobo that puts a guy into play. That card is mm -hmm. nuts. That card is nuts. Especially with Chocobo Knight. Like, because they can... Or, and Fat Chocobo, because they can always make sure they have a Chocobo when... It's actually really good. And Azana, there's so many ways to make sure you have a Chocobo to play for free. Well, plus, um, you can play for free. So if you go, like, Chocobo Knight, find that one, play that one to play a haste one, give it haste, tap it, put another one, go. Like... <laughs> yes. Yeah. It, it's... Uh, Unfortunately, I tend I wasn't playing a Shantoto deck, so I had no Shantotos. But unfortunately, I tend to play Shantotos, so usually right. it's not that big of a deal. But man, like that card was good. But yeah, anyway, the point is like this guy used Moogle, and I was like, oh man, that's no, you gotta be using it better than that. Like, <laughs> don't go get Choker Bros. Go get big things like uh, Shantotos and stuff. You know. Right yeah. now, yeah. I, no, I don't. I uh, I actually tested Choker Bros. quite a bit. Uh, right when Opus Six dropped, and uh. I didn't even include it at all, and Chocobos are... Yeah. That's another topic we can get to another day, but uh, they're very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, uh, Zach, what about you? Um, well, the two cards I have in mind, I knew they'd be good, but I didn't know how insane, and that's the sure. Minfilia and Titan, just kind of both together in like their Earth Shells. So Zach got to play my Scion deck. Yeah, Titan <laughs> is. I actually had a game where me and my opponent both had a Titan, and we just it was, oh, it was crazy. But um, the it's always a two for one if you yep. play it like at the right times. It yep. and when you can two for one somebody that badly, and then they probably take a damage afterwards too because they don't leave. They didn't calculate all that removal. It's absurd. 
it's such a swing. And then uh, the Minfilia, like we talked about earlier, where you just let a Paul hit you uh, to fill up the break zone. That card is good. It's okay turn one. Uh, it's, it's playable turn one. It's good mid game and it's great late game to close out with whatever tool you need that's in your bin outside of a summon, but whatever. Uh, yeah, man, those two cards are absolutely incredible. Yeah, I've I... really been liking Earth decks, and it's hard. It's actually very difficult for me right now to build anything that doesn't have Earth. That was. It's so funny because I don't know if you were ever like me. I, I we we played similar decks, but at the beginning of like time of me playing this game, I was I'll never play Earth. Earth is garbage. Like the only Earth card I'm ever interested in playing is Shantoto. You were thinking Mono Earth though. You were like, I don't like playing these dumb idiots that you know. Yeah, I, I still don't. don't. I still don't. I kid you not, I do have a Mono Earth deck built on FF decks, and I like it quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, I just I never thought I would play. I just never thought I'd play Earth. Hmm. All right, uh, Adam, how about you, man? Um, so I've been playing like a, some Viking standard Unity style, style stuff too, um, and I really like Paladin a lot. Uh, the five CP AK that takes four K less from forwards. Hey, uh, who called that the last podcast? Uh, <laughs> I I I think if you get an arc out and that guy's a nine K. It's really hard to deal with. Yeah, nice um, data Luba, idiot, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just yeah, and then yeah, you most of the time like in the decks that I've been playing, you also have Diablos as well. So you're just like, okay, they you start like doing a lot of battle tricks and stuff to get over me, and then I'm just like, okay, that's a cute four K. Now I'm just gonna take zero. Um yeah, it's he's just a wall. Um and what I've been doing is I've been playing like um Water Wind Vikings with Zemus and Nono. And then I just use that guy to let me get to the point where I can build up, and then I just start swinging out for game with, like, Layax and stuff. Interesting, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. That does Have you hit. had an issue, what I meant was 5-drop Diablos, have you had an issue against that card at all? Um, oh, yeah, that cool? does that does straight up kill me. Yeah. Uh, the, it, car, the card's so... a lot less play, though, right? Because, like, decks are so aggressive right now. It's It's... I'm not saying the card's bad. Like I'm still gonna be playing it, but I like yeah. to... <clears throat> yeah. Earth Earthwind is still there too. Like uh, at the weekly, Curtis actually came down and was playing Mill against it, and I was playing the Vikings. So it's kind of a Mill deck versus a deck that I was trying to draw <laughs> a lot. It wasn't a good look, and he had uh, I think he di Diablos my uh, Paladin actually. It yeah. wasn't good. Yeah. All right. What about you, Curtis? Uh, the card for me would probably be Paul. I think it's. Really, really, really good. And late game, if that hits you once, you lose. That's, That's just point, my opinion. Yeah. yeah. Like early on, sure, it's probably gonna fill up your break zone with like good cards, like if you're playing Minville and stuff like that. Right. But if you save it for the right moment and it hits you once, like the game's just over. Yeah. I ironically too, if you had like I try to think, if they're so Yuna says place from anywhere, right? So can you can exile all the cards from Yuna, right? With Yuna? Mm, not anywhere from the field too. from the field oh yeah because otherwise it'd be discard okay yeah, yeah. you can yeah. yeah okay yeah otherwise it would okay all right all right i was like field is there a way to like play that so that it works okay yeah i think that paul um is going to be a very serious threat uh and the thing is is that like the reason i like paul isn't even because it's that good like i think paul's probably like a seven which is still pretty good like like a Lua, for example, to me is like a nine. Like Lua is great. Paul, so Paul being a seven isn't bad. I think Paul, it's a very good card. But the fact that it exists means that, like, while I'm building my, if I'm building Earth Wind, for example, like I'm including Masked Woman, I'm including like other cards to make sure I can deal with an early Paul. Because, you know, yes, exactly like Curtis said, if it hits you late game, you're gonna lose. But there are game, there are there are decks like uh like the water decks or the earth wind decks where if it hits you early and you're mm -hmm. not an aggressive deck that could yeah. really punish you like i think if you do the math like after three swings about like including cards they've already drawn like during the game they literally have half their deck left yeah so that would, yeah because like five, six times six, three that's seven, 18 eight. you start that's the game with five cards you draw one yeah. for if you go first and then you draw two every turn yeah i think yeah, it's around like 23 after. yeah around like 26 ish or something like that yeah and not only that but if you're playing a deck synergized around a certain strategy a lot of those cards are now gone like you know like like not half because you're drawing some of those cards but like you know every turn it hits you that's six cards 
that you can no longer use unless your synergy is very heavily like Minfilia, for example, or, or Miner or, or whatnot. Yeah, I think Paul is interesting because it adds a, a level of dynamics to the game um, that you need there. You, I think that Paul is healthy for the format because Paul constantly puts the format in check. You can't just build whatever you want, right? And we're definitely going to segue that into the next topic. But before mm-hmm. we do, I do want to mention two of the cards that I thought were good. Uh, Squall, on paper, looks absolutely garbage to me. I... I have no idea why people even tried it. Like, it just does not look good. Uh, watching it play online and having played it in I- Mono Ice myself, I think Squall is nuts. I hate that card so much. Turbo it's, discard. It's, it's so, so gross. Turbo. It's so gross. It, so gross. It, it, that deck it, didn't need haste. Particularly yeah. in that deck, it is absolutely gross. Yeah. Uh, the other card, um, you know, maybe I have two more cards too because I think they're just nuts. Okay, really, I have like 12 cards. There are so many good cards from this set, but a lot of them I'm actually saving for nationals. You know, we'll talk about those. Uh, but Layla is one of the cards that I think is just nuts. Like, just nuts. Like, if, you, if you're playing Layla, you can be playing it. You could pick, like, Mono Water, where you get, like, Cloud Darknesses and Cognazos and Rafias, and, and, and you could do things like. Like, you could have um, Kefka. You could be playing Mono Water Monsters with Layla and Vikings. You could have Kefka to where, like, you turn all your guys into um, monsters, and you bounce them all with Rafia. You bounce all the guys, and then turn with Rafia because you you've drawn your whole deck because of stupid Layla and Viking. You can be playing standard units where you're drawing all of your your um, your pugilists and your Psychon wardens and your Psychon enforcers, and you can gladiator them back. You could be playing it like you could literally pair it like um, with any single color. The only deck I have not experimented with is with fire. And I don't even think it'd be that bad in fire. Uh, where you I've have like marauders. I've experimented with it in fire, actually. <laughs> how how was it? it? So we actually just did like a deck tech video, and a guy like brought it up with like the new guy and Furion. Yeah. With Layla and Vikings, and it was actually really interesting. Oh, it's, uh, I, haven't I haven't play tested it enough yet, though. That deck gets Hilda, and then you can break Hilda with Furion. Yep, and it all all that counts to guy because Layla's a two, Hilda's a two. Uh, theory oh, on a guy inter- or two. That's so interesting. Yeah, Hilda has definitely was one of the other cards. I was gonna say Hilda is nuts. Like with with Layla, like it is ridiculous. I think Zach saw me where I actually like misplayed because I played an extra guy. I think I could draw five with Hilda, and I <laughs> only drew four. And I was like, oh, all right. Well, I guess I just drew four. Sad. You know? Yeah, you went dull two backups, pitch two cards after playing another card. Yeah. And then play that, refill up to four, yeah. and you kind of just look some sweet. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, real quick, before we move on, there's one more big subject that we definitely want to talk about, but cards that you think are good that haven't seen play yet. I'll start real quick. I think Zell. I think Zell is good. I think it should definitely see play. If And I think Fire is good enough, by the way. I think that... If, if, if you want to play Fire, it is good enough right now. I'm not saying it's top, it's tier 1, but it's good enough to play. I would play in an LQ, for example. And I think I would play Zell. Yeah, that Zell's a very good card. Yeah. Anyone else have any cards that you just think like, hey, it is good, just you wait, it will it will be good. If you give me about three seconds, I'll have something. <laughs> Alright, I'm giving you. The other one is, you know, the other cards I was impressed by that, that you were playing was the Riku Pain. Um, all those oh, yeah. they were they were better than I thought they were. They create situations that are very difficult for your opponent, even if you don't have a Yuna. Like a lot of people, I think, are getting uh, kind of tunnel visioned on. I want to be able to play these cards for free, so I need yeah. to play Yuna. And then the, I mean, the YRP deck's great. Yeah, I agree. And that's why that's why I played in the Oxcon match, and it was awesome. But I could see playing a deck just with Riku and Pain side by side, and that being good enough with like a Hashmal type shell. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Adam, another card would be Adia, the backup. Yep. I, when I was playing your list, I loved it. It was great. I think that card yeah, was nuts. That card was amazing for me. Yeah. I was not sad. Like, oftentimes, I would just discard Adia turn one to play the backup. And I'd be like, all right, well, we got this for later. And it always was really good. Card that I see future-proofing that will be good if I'm just going to throw this out there. Like, Moogle Brothers is going to be broken, guys. That was one Absolutely going to be yeah. broken. <laughs> just not yet. It's, it's not time yet. But so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and transition. So I, the reason I talked about Paul being healthy for the metagame is because 
I have to admit that I'm building, I'm starting to build decks for nationals. Uh, I'm starting to put together like a team that I, I kind of want. Um, the more these guys qualify, the easier this team gets. Um, but I, I have like this giant list of decks that I'm starting to build for nationals. And Paul keeps me in check. I have to ask myself, can this deck beat my opponent if he goes turn one Paul? And one of my answers is usually yes if I'm going to play Shadow Lord or yes if I'm playing Masked Woman. And it's healthy because I don't get to do whatever I want. That being said, Paul isn't running Rampage. I'm not going to play against Paul in 50% of my matchups. Maybe that seems like an exaggeration, but did anyone in this room play in an event this weekend that they did not play or play against Ice? No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, Ice, is it healthy for the metagame? Before we start, I want to say that you know, I appreciate the topic coming up. I appreciate it when I get to read about it on the US chat. I appreciate it when I get to read about it on the fans chat. I don't appreciate the, the level of toxicity that this has caused, um, but people have strong opinions, right? Is ice too good? I mean, we have Cody, who is a mono water guy. He His favorite element is water. I What is he known for playing? Mono ice. Why is that? Because Cody, you know, theoretically, my understanding, wants to bring the best deck possible that's going to give him the best chance at winning the tournament. You know, Adam Lane is not the uh, mono ice type of player, but what did he play at the LQ on Saturday? He played mono ice, right? Um, th is this deck healthy for the format? Well, let's, let's start with you, Zach. <laughs> um, <clears throat> there's a lot of different factors to consider when answering this but if you mean healthy in terms of the metagame oh, yes like there are decks to beat it and i'm i would I'm, after i'm talking i want to direct it to cody to tell us all about what he fears because if anybody's going to tell us what beats ice it's him well yeah i, I want to get to cody last for sure since he's going to say i'm pretty problem. sure i've seen cody quoted saying uh oh. <laughs> it's not unbeatable. Like it's like oh, like, I, I don't think it's unbeatable. And you're yeah. y and you're like it's not as big a deal as people. Do. People need to learn to adjust their play styles to beat the deck they're facing. Uh, if they think they can play the same way every game, there's going to be games you don't win because you didn't adjust your play style. Ice is one of those decks that forces you to think a little differently about how you sequence your plays, uh, whether that's more aggressive, less aggressive, depending on your archetype. Um, also. Uh, are we talking locals or are we like, getting new players into the game or are we talking competitive? Because I could definitely see for a local scene where you're trying to get new players interested in the game, if they have to play against Mono Ice and perhaps they don't have a hand to play with and they don't get to play their game, they're not going to find it fun, they might not stick around. Whereas in a competitive environment, I think it's fine. Like it's It exists in the game, there's ways to beat it. Uh, and in a competitive environment, you have to learn to adjust your style. Like Even if you're playing a deck that loses to it. You can just slot a Shadow Lord in if you're playing Dark. Like there, you there's well, ways to play around it. Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna play Devil's Advocate because sure. I kind of agree. I, I I agree with you and I disagree with you wholeheartedly on both sides. It's so it's so extreme how much I think Ice is unhealthy and that players need to like quote get good. Like they need to learn to play around it. The thing is, is that it's you. You're, in order for you to play around it, though, you have to build a specific type of deck that can play around it, right? So, for example, uh, a great example of this is, is Mono Water. If you build it correctly, you can beat the Ice decks. Uh, Cody talked about how he fears that. I imagine that the kind of Water decks he's playing against are the people that know what they're doing. Not only that, but when they go into the matchup, they know that Cody plays Water or plays Ice. They know how to play that matchup, right? Whereas, if I'm building this deck, right, like say, say when I'm building Earth Wind. And I'm building it like I need to make sure I can deal have something because Earthwind particularly does not have great answers to Paul, right? Shadow Lord is Earthwind's best answer to Paul, sadly, <clears throat> at least off the top of my head. Uh, yes, it has other answers. You could you could Cactar Dan Luma, but it, it's the best single card answer that I could think of, and it's not even in those colors technically unless you include Star Symbol. But you have to build these decks so that they can do that, right? Whereas right. if you include a card like Shadow Mage. Right, and you're on the draw, and your opponent or and your opponent or Shadow Lord, sorry, and your opponent, your opponent goes turn one Argath into Dalmaturge. You're probably Not discarding even, the Shadow Lord. You're, you're probably either discarding the Shadow Lord, which you don't want to, right? Or like you hold two cards and you play your Shadow Lord, and then they play like two backups, 
<clears throat> and you discarded your cards to play your Shadow Lord, they've switched gears, and I don't know how in the world you're winning that game. Because next turn, yes, you killed their two guys, right? Next turn, they untap with the Shadow Lord. They probably have other dark cards. God forbid they draw one, right? They have to draw the backups that turn to play. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're untapping, you have two backups, and you're playing your Genesis. Or you're playing something else to punish them further. You could play, like, Sarah Zidane that turn. And so now they're back to no cards in hand, and they have a Shadow Lord. Cool. You know? Yeah. And so it forces, like, this unhealthy play style um, for local events. I agree with you on that. For competitive events, though, one of the points being made, of course, is that you should be able to get good and play that, right? But, like, is Cody a bad guy if he shows up at his local events and plays Mono Ice? Of course not. Shouldn't he be playing the best deck that he can qualify with to practice it right so he should be playing that all the time right sure yeah, yeah. so I, I i agree with you and i disagree with you i as where does that sound what about you adam how, how are you feeling about it <laughs> yeah it's, it, 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 uh, sorry i was just saying one thing i can empathize with people who have those views i just don't necessarily agree right format. that's fair yeah, it's it's hard. It's hard to like draw a line in the sand because uh, I don't blame anyone for playing any deck that puts them in the best position to win in a competitive environment, um, or even at a local. Because I mean, you're still playing for something, right? Like you're you're entering a tournament, and you're playing. Um, I mean, to our locals, um, Turbo Ice has kind of gone like a lot of people are playing at our locals, um, and we don't. And then our locals not like everyone's not competitive. Um, some people just want to play what they want to play and have fun, and. Honestly, it's it hasn't been bad for us, even with the people playing Turbo Discard, because after someone loses or something, we'll always talk through the game and we'll try to make them understand like why these cards are dumb and like why or like why people are playing them and how they can better play around them, and it makes them come back and and they always come back better players, at least from what I've seen. And our scene continues to grow. It's pretty awesome, actually. Like we get anywhere from like sixteen to twenty at our local weeklies on Tuesdays, which is pretty awesome for this game. See, that's, uh, that's fair. I would say, you know, it, it depends on the type of player, right? So I showed up for my my first tournament ever. I had never even played a game of Final Fantasy. And in the first game, I got Al Sitted, and then my second forward got Sid Ranged. So I, I feel you. Like, some, those cards are not fun to play against, and I stayed. But I think that some of the more casual players, like, that's a huge turnoff. And, and I don't think that Square Enix should should cater towards those players. And obviously, whatever is working is working because your scene is growing um at least it is there right but how healthy is it like like does it need to be in the game like did they need to print thaumaturge would the game be better off without thaumaturge Ugh, that's really hard um i mean I, I know some people have some choice words for thaumaturge like i know chris does it chris hates he'll play the card but he hates the card um it, this card is like the most feel bad mechanic honestly to me there's not much like you can a good player will know what they need to be discarding but man if you hit, get hit with turn one triple discard like have fun <laughs> i one, mean it's it's one, rough one of the reasons i came over to final fantasy from magic was that i felt like yes in magic I, I i'm not taking any place away from magic magic is a very skill intensive game with a lot of decision trees right final fantasy just does not have that mana screw problem where you can at least like if, if I don't have a bad hand, I can still play turn one wall and be in an okay shape position because I have a guy with Brave that can attack and I can defend, you know, and I can I can play this game. I can still play this game. Whereas, yeah, exactly. If you open up with that that nuts hand, especially those players that are playing like the Jesper, sometimes I, I won't have a hand to start my turn with, you know. Not literally. I think you go down to like two cards, right? But like... Yeah, with the this, Turbo Discard, it's like three cards in the first turn. Yeah, is what happens. That, that's like their nuts, and it's surprisingly consistent. Well, like sure, you yeah. look at the All deck, the turges, ways, yeah. Jespers, yeah. you look at Argas, yep. you know, yeah. you look at the deck on paper, and you're like, eh, it's okay. And then you play against it, and you're like, this is like kind of cancerous. Like it, it it's not fun like, to play against. Um, if you don't know like how to properly set up against Turbo Ice, like if you make one mistake or you get rid of one more extra card, like your each turn, depending on how you build your deck, unless you have two drops every turn, like you just can't play anything. Right, so like cards, cards that are five drops, for example, are extremely awkward, right? Or even cards like Menphilia, which I love, the six drop, which is like one of my favorite cards, is kind of an awkward card against Ice <laughs> because you have to be able to play the card with enough cards from your hand, 
it only costs two. If you, you can pay, pay six to play the initial, the yeah. same thing with like same thing with like uh, Hilda, right? Like in order to draw all those cards, you have to actually have cards to discard. Uh, luckily, in that deck, like Layla Viking, kind of covers that solution a little bit, uh, and maybe that's something to talk about. That Layla Viking is certainly uh, a, not, I wouldn't say a counter because you're not going to beat an ice deck by playing Layla Viking, but it's certainly going to help. Uh, but but I, I guess Adam, what I'm what I'm asking you though is, would the game be better just strictly off if they just ban Thaumaturge? How much damage would it do to the game? Certainly, listen. I'm not. I hate that Magic has a ban list every other week. Like it's so frustrating. And now that I don't play it, I laugh about it. I'm like, oh, those idiots that can be playing Final Fantasy and their cards don't get banned. But would the game be better off without Thalmaturge if they banned it right now? I don't think so. I honestly, I see Genesis as more of a problem. But I and I don't even think you should ban Genesis either. I, I like there are there are ways to play around those cards. Um, the, the, like the tempo, the tempo ice one doesn't bother me that much. Like I, I think it's a really, really good deck, and it might even be the best deck to play. But there are a lot of strategic plays you can make to play around the way that that deck plays. And sometimes, yeah, they can go off and just like triple flaun you or something, and you're just like don't know what to do. Uh, the 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 reason I bring up turbo more so than the tempo version is because turbo can just have a turn one that just feels so unfair. Uh, that just makes it feel like you're not even you don't even get to play Final Fantasy. Like right. they just made you pitch your whole hand, and now you're in top deck mode, and all their stuff they're going to be able to play. And if they get double Gesper in the first three turns, I hope you can play whatever you draw, because if yeah. not, it's gone. Um, and even then, like it's a very volatile deck. So like if they don't get that, like say they get a single discard turn one, they're probably going to lose. And if you manage to even remotely turn the corner, they're also probably going to lose. Yeah, I was talking to Chris earlier, and like, if you don't start that special setup, you're literally playing a subpar ice deck. So, yeah, but you can't yeah. outplay anything, so you just so, die. So, you know, let's let's not get fused with like, uh, do I think Thaumaturge is a better card? By the way, I'm not saying, by the way, in no way am I saying to ban Thaumaturge. I'm just asking if that's what we should do. No, um, we... is Thaumaturge? I don't say that Thaumaturge is a better card than Genesis, for example. Is Genesis the actual problem? I don't think so. I do think Genesis is better than Thaumaturge, but the ice decks with Genesis... So, for example, is Genesis a fair card? No, it's not, right? But neither is Al Cid, and neither is Shantoto, neither is Estola. These aren't fair cards. And the, as the game gets longer, or as the game goes more and more opuses, we're going to keep getting a more balanced color pie. We would definitely need red to get some unfair cards soon, at some point. But, yeah. you know... But but Genesis is not a fair card by any means. But Ice is still a competitive deck without, well, not without Genesis, maybe that. But but without Thaumaturge, mm -hmm. I think you could still play competitively Genesis as we saw in Opus Four. It was probably the best deck undisputed, right? Uh, it it took down the Octagon Open in the hands of Josh Gah. It took down multiple tournaments, right? But now we're seeing Ice take down every national event that we've had. That's in the UK, at least, not in Japan, it hasn't. But every national in the UK or in Europe, at least, was taken down with ice. Is that a problem? I mean, let's let's say it was any other deck. If if Mono Fire took down every single national event, you we would be having a different discussion, right? Sure, probably. Right. So, I think you also had to consider like it's early in the format too. Yeah, so like. Right. You also have to think about like how many people are actually being adventurous with their deck building. So like if they're building something like brand new, then obviously if someone's going to go with ice, something that's more pre-established, and you're making them discard, and you're already adding on top of a new set, unsure about the cards, then sure you're probably going to take more games. Right, like they're, think, trying to, they're trying to play their nidhogs at nine yeah. CP when they have no cards in their hand. That's yeah. yeah, and I think like I think I think Gen Con will be the answer. Like if it turns out like ice just completely wipes out Gen Con, you know. Maybe at that point we should have another conversation whether or not it's actually like destroying well, everything. You know, I it, almost think that Masters was kind of, and, and maybe that's why I brought up like the Japan thing. But like the the fact that the that Mono Ice um, didn't win Masters, um, it, it's not like the Japanese are no like slouches at, at knowing when Ice is good. Like they know when to play their Kujas, you know. They, I mean, they'll always play their Kujas. But the thing is, is that like when Ice is really good, they'll play it. And it, you know, I don't think that ice was super well represented there. Am I am I remembering the list wrong? 
Um, but I know it didn't win. Uh, Water One, for example, that was mm-hmm. that was a good uh, sign to me that like we're moving in the right direction. Um, I think in the United States, or you know, I don't want to talk about Canada, but just as far as NA goes, but at least in the U.S. here. We know that thaumaturge is a problem, and we maybe exaggerate it. By the way, when I say thaumaturge is a problem, I'm just playing devil's advocate here. I don't think the card should be banned. But we know that it's a problem, and we talk about it every day. Every podcast talks about it. Every every The fans page talks about it. The US page talks about it, which makes that people play the deck more, right? They realize that, hey, look, like I want the best chance. I'm going to play this deck. So we see it more. You know, Adam, you've played the deck. In an event, not even because you like the deck, but because basically everyone's saying it's broken, right? So you took the deck, you did very well with it. The deck does, I mean, I'm not trying to take away any credit from it. It does kind of autoplay itself. Um, You know, they don't have a hand, your turn. And then your opponent that you beat on the first day played it the second day, because arguably because of that experience. Right. So, so I, so I, I will say that I think that is unhealthy um but maybe it's conversations like we're having now that can be a problem but hopefully this at the end of this conversation we've we've kind of made the solution that hey look we realize that everyone's hyping it up but cody here is about to give us the breakdown on how to beat it cody yeah okay so um first off there's obviously there's two different versions like adam said there's tempo and then there's turbo uh but really i think Whatever deck you're playing, you're going in. If you know you're playing ice, or if you don't know you're playing ice, regardless, I'm always trying to play two two drop backups. Uh, I think Matiski said that you should always have 12 starting backups in your deck, and I couldn't agree more with him. Um, but that's my go-to play. I don't and whether I know what I'm playing against or not. I'm going to try and get two two drops down. Um, and then depending on what you're playing, whether you're playing like Earth, for example, you can play Dataluma, and that's like Ice's biggest threat. And Earth, or if you're playing Wind, you can play Layak. If you're playing Water, you can play Claudie, Fairy, Astrology, and Yuna. Like, there's so many cards that you can play that just help out with that matchup. So I don't understand why every time we get on, like, our Facebooks, like, the first post I see almost every day is, like, a... Should Ice be banned? Should Thaumaturge be banned? Why is this so broken? Um, but... To be fair, every other post is also like, is this Scion's deck good? Yeah. I, <laughs> yes, which, it's good. Which, you put the 12 Scions in your deck. Good job. Yeah, no. <laughs> but uh, but no, I don't I don't think anything should be banned. I don't think we need a ban list at this point in the game. If um, you look at what was banned in chapters, it was way worse. And like, yeah, like Moogle. And things Come in, on. Like, yeah, Moogle, just an unfair card. And things <laughs> in Magic that get banned are crazy. Any card game that bans the cards because it breaks the game. It's not, and it, or it's the only deck played because nothing else is good enough except maybe one little counter, and then you have like a, are you playing A or B type thing? Well, that's that's and pretty that's that. pretty polar, right? Though that's not necessarily true. Like like Miracle was banned because it's just unfun and miserable to play against, and it was also a, a top percentage the of the deck. Top deck? Oh, that was yeah. that was a whole thing with time and right, rules. right. But no, I'm just no. saying, like there there are other reasons, and that was so a slow play thing, yeah. you know, I wouldn't yeah. I wouldn't blame Square Enix for saying, yeah, Thaumaturge isn't fun. Maybe we oh, just at least maybe fun. we just at I least won't print cards it. like this in the future. Oh, I I don't like playing against it. And remember, like when we both played it, uh, locals and Casey, we talked about this. We yeah. we both played it, just like, eh, we'll try to cheese out the locals, and it was just miserable. Like, yeah. you wanted to drop three rounds in, so you're like, this just isn't fun. It, I we was, had a I mirror was where I went I turn it. one, triple Thaumaturge go, and yeah. you had four cards. <laughs> I, no, I, I, would no. tur- I would turn one vein. I would turn yeah. one vein because it's all I could do against you, you know. Not, one, you know. Three. <laughs> yeah, and it's just, that wasn't fun. Like, it wasn't fun. I will say this. The ice mirror match is one of the most fun things I've ever piloted in my whole life if you minus the turbo discard. If it's just... Like Opus Four Ice versus Opus Four Ice, that is a fun game to play. But yeah, yeah, I can I can agree with that, Adam. What were you gonna say? Uh, I was gonna ask if y'all had actually played the Turbo and like a lot, like yourselves. We had, yeah. Yeah. we played in Kansas, yeah. Oh, so y'all played y'all brought the Turbo build? Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's what we played Friday. Uh, Jake Lee, Sam, and myself all played it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, and, yeah, and so- it's not it's not like I, I I don't have any experience on the deck. I just it's not a fun deck for me to play. No, I agree. It's not fun at all. Um, Squall like, makes it I, a little I, more fun. So yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I guess you're still like you're still just trying to like like it's turn one. It's like how many cards can I make a discard, and then it's after that. It's like how many cards can I play a turn while making them discard as many but, cards like, as possible. Like squall, for example. Like even if you're playing like the flan version, like it's like well I'll attack you, and well you can't block because I'll I'll flan your cards out of your hand. Or it's like even if I have no flans, it's like well like as soon as you block, I'm gonna glass the you. You're gonna discard a card. My squall's giant. Good job, oh. idiot. Like, I yeah. actually, I never, like, hate losing, t like, the tempo builds and stuff, the ones that are running flans and everything, like... No, but, I, like, I, I, the, the turbo ones can do it, too, right? Sure, like, they, yeah. They can, they can attack, and, like, if they have a Jesper in, in play, and they have cards in their hand, like, sometimes, like, you know, they would they want to play it efficiently so that they would play those cards first, but no, they could just Jesper you during the attack step, like... Yeah, a lot of times you'll like you'll play your sit all stay and you'll target and then you'll guess for after. Or uh, that's, a, that's pretty that common. Could be played at the, during your opponent's turn. Yep. Yeah, and in regards to the turbo build, uh, I actually played it against it at my locals on Monday night, and uh, I think if they go first, that's something that can like deter like a newer player. Like, oh, I lose three cards and I'm starting with four cards because they don't know like I should keep these backups. They're gonna usually they're gonna go into like panic mode. And they're like, all right, I'm going to keep my big four drop guy, discard one, or discard two, play this four drop guy, and then lose to Sid Allstein next turn. Like, but they don't know that. Right. Whereas, like us, we're we're more experienced. Like, I'm going to keep. Like, if you discard three cards in my hand, they're all going to be like forwards or something that I just can't play. And I'm going to play two two drops. And against the turbo build, as long as you get your backups down, you can. I mean, you can turn the game around. Yeah. As soon as you drop something that like they can't swing over, you're fine. Most of yeah. the time, if you get the three, if you get the three backups, I think it's probably it's a, most of the time it's just over. Yeah, yeah it's just yeah. it's just a feel bad deck sometimes, especially for like newer people. It's like you feel like you didn't play a game, so it was completely out of your control, and it's like tilting almost. And yeah. it is right. it is solely the reason that you can have a deck that t that one, for example, you know, I'm not trying trying to take anything away from um, the guy who won your qualifier, uh, Cody, but like it is solely the reason a deck with that many ex bursts can do so well. Right, like, oh yeah. If you just e keep attacking with your e ice guys, I'm gonna keep ex bursting with Matthias and and Odin and Chaos Walker, and then you know I'll, yeah, I'll no. card advantage you. I mean, that's right. that's all. Uh, that's part of the reason Chris lost to Curtis as well. Um, it was like last game he hit he hit a Star Sybil on six point of damage, which allowed Curtis to have just enough cards to Shantoto. Toto. <laughs> that was it. Right. Yeah, and uh, the guy uh, Andrew. The dude that won the yeah. LQ that I was at, he actually had to play Jake Lee, and Jake Lee was playing uh, Chris and Adams at list, uh, like the turbo discard right. version. Yeah, and he uh, he kept Shadow Lord in hand after discarding three, and just straight up Shadow Lord, and then and won the game with ease from there. I think EX burst stops ice, like with with ease because we really don't have any EX burst. I mean, we have Kuja if you play Kuja. Sid Alstein. Uh, Alstein, yeah. And then you have Sid Alstein, which is super situational. Like Opus One Shiva if you're playing cards you probably shouldn't be playing. <laughs> yeah. And then with Turbo Discard, like they have really bad defense too. So like, you know, if you become the aggressor, they can't do anything. Like they have to take every hit, so Yeah, it's interesting. I, I do wonder if um there are decks that are gonna be popping up that that take advantage of cards like Argath and Thaumaturge. Um, that aren't turbo discard though. Like simplifying your opponent's decisions. Like for example, if you were to pair it with fire, for example, um, cards like like Saban, for example, get insane when your when your opponent has less cards to deal with them with. Right. Um, trying to think off the top of my head, maybe like there was some wind, like ice wind, uh, like during Opus One and Two that was doing well. Like I didn't play back then, but I've gone back through the list. Um. And like one crazy person was like playing the Leon that made them play a guy. Like I wonder if like uh, I remember that. Yeah, I'm not that saying cool. yeah, I'm not saying that Leon will see play, but like I do wonder if if Argath Thaumaturge, like if we ban them, for example, we would see like these cool decks that could emerge from these cards come around. Oh, of course, yeah. You know, like uh, like uh, like with the new Zidane, or maybe even the three drop Zidane, like. You could see this ice wind cool deck that focuses around like manipulating your hand, or you know, a water ice deck where like you're gonna be bouncing stuff to their hand and then making them discard it with like these cheap efficient guys. 
Like those decks seem like they're kind of cool. So I don't. I'm not saying I want to see it banned. I just kind of wanted to open up the discussion because I think what we see is a lot of uh, knee jerk reactions. Um, and you know, maybe maybe those reactions are actually more unhealthy than the thaumaturges. Yeah, no, I I completely agree with you there. Um, actually, believe it or not, I played Golbez uh, for like the first two or three opus, or first yeah, first three opus. And that I felt like was more unhealthy for the game. Like that's what caused our my local scene to dwindle, is because me and me and like one of my best friends, we were both playing Golbez, and nobody could figure out a way to beat it. Yeah, you know, uh, but, I, Yuna. <laughs> it, it's funny. You well, say eventually, that because... eventually they they learned to play Yuna and stuff like that. Uh, but like one... against Ice, like they don't even. They, I don't really hear many like complaints. Yeah, one of the things that actually hurt, I have to say that that hurt our, our meta game here in Tampa, is that. When, when we formed the, the Chocobos, right, um, between Zach, Angel, and myself, there were, I don't think there was a single event in a span of months that we didn't win between the three of us. One of us would always win the event, period, whether it was Zach, Angel, or myself. And what happened was a lot of, like, the worst players would kind of start to, like, gravitate towards, like, oh, these guys are forming, like, this super team. It's really unfair. It's really unfair, right? And so they actually left. Whereas what we have now are the newer players. We have play, players like Chad and James, who instead of, you know, I, I there hasn't been an event I haven't won in a long time locally. Like, I've been doing very well locally. But what they do is they bring me their deck after event. What can I change? How how would I have done this? What, you know, what would have happened if I had done this? And they actually take this, like, encouragement. And what's what's been really great about that is... I have to say that the level of the people, and I'm just saying this out of complete transparency, the people that left were so much more toxic than than people like Chad or James or the, these people that are just like 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 Ian and 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 uh, Alfred. Alfred, yeah, like all you know, John. Like I'm gonna keep saying these people, Jacob, Matt, you know, all these people from my locals event that are just constantly trying to evolve to the next level, and I have no doubt that if I showed up with Mono Ice Turbo Discard. And just kept beating them with it. They would they would start bringing Shadow Lord. They'd start bringing like James would bring some crazy shenanigans to like try to stop me because it's like their goal. He'd be playing uh, Fire Earth again and just like Phoenix Krilling you. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, yeah. I completely agree. Actually, those are some of like my favorite locals. Are some of like the the newer guys are just guys that are maybe less experienced with TCGs mm -hmm. uh, because almost after every tournament. At least one of my opponents would be like, "Hey, will you take a look at my deck, and yeah, just be like, yeah. and just see what like, hey, what could I change? Not just particularly to like beat me, for instance, yeah. but just to like make his make like his or her deck improve." That that's what it's all about to me. It's like getting a bunch of players around that are having fun, adapting, and learning, um, yeah. and it helps the scene a lot. I mean, I know Curtis up there in Fredericksburg; they do the same thing. They play it what like three times a week or something now. Up yeah, there. like. Back when I was switching jobs, like we used to be in the shop like every single day, playing like at least five hours each time, and you know we're all having a ball, all learning new things and teaching each other how to play, what cards work well, and things like that. So yeah, um, I think that kind of community is the best to have, especially when people are like interested in getting better in the game rather than just focusing on like you know winning or things like that too, because like. Back when Opus 4 Ice was a big thing, like, I never played Ice. Like, I love the color of Ice, but I've never gotten to, like, actually, like, playing it just because of how my locals does things because they have, like, this big network. So, like, if if someone says, like, Turbo Ice is winning, everyone will build a deck to beat Turbo Ice and they'll punish you for playing it. <laughs> you will try. So, like, whenever I try to play Ice, they end up, like, saying, oh, he's going to play Ice today. Everyone play, like, Earth, Wind, reactivate everything. I'm like, okay, I guess I'll lose. So, like, it, it's healthy to have, like, a bunch of people that are interested in getting better or, like, you know, don't get too discouraged, especially, like, you know, when they end up losing because we have a lot of people that are trying to, like, learn new cards. And, you know, as long as they have fun, that's the best thing. One more announcement, uh, which is uh, the Seattle Crystal Cup, uh, which I don't know if we mentioned. I don't think we mentioned it yet. Yeah, um, that, yeah. that has been announced. Uh, if you enter that, you get the Unibox. So I know a lot of people are going to be in the market for that. That's insane. Like that's, <laughs> I, I want the Unibox more than I want anything. And it is at, is it PAX West or yeah, PAX West. Uh, it's oh, not, okay. you, but you don't have to buy a badge for PAX West. It's, right. I guess it's, I don't know if it's at an outside venue yet. Um, but kind of like the, it was at PAX East. At PAX mm -hmm. East, you didn't have to buy a badge. 
Okay. Yeah. But hey, pro tip, pro tip, right? After the event, walk around as people are leaving and ask them for their b- badges. Most of the people will say they want to hang on to it as a souvenir, but a ton of people will be like, yeah, man, here's a badge, and you can get the packs for free. <laughs> That's what and we that, did. And that is uh, September 2nd and 3rd, I believe. Um, and then uh, outside of that, we also have one more giveaway to announce, correct? Yep. Okay, and is this the this is the Facebook giveaway, right? Yep, yep. Okay, and this is Jake Pascalia. Pascalia? I'm not sure if I butchered that. I'm sorry. Uh, but P-A-S-C-E-L-L-I-A. I don't think that Jake will be complaining after he sees yeah, think, all the stuff I, he I, Yeah, he should be stoked. Uh, yeah. But yeah, congratulations to him. Uh, and that about wraps us up for today, guys. Uh, once again, shout out to uh, Cards of Evilies for sponsoring our podcast. Uh, I want to thank Adam and Curtis for joining us today. And congratulations on winning your guys' LQ. Uh, as always, guys, just make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, and then follow us on Facebook for all future content. And we have been the Choker Bros. I'm Cody Snodgrass. I'm Zach Burrell. And I'm Sam Snipe Prime. See you next week. Bye.